Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and here we have a three-star British Standard Lock. This is a UAP Kinetica, and I've had this in my collection for ages. It was a recommendation from a, um, a just a comment on my YouTube channel, and I didn't play with it. And then I recently went to a lock sport meetup, and there was some second-hand ones. I had a go at picking them, and wow, were they difficult. They were really difficult, and I was like, well, I really should go back and pick this one and, uh, and, and see what it's like, and it comes with all these bits of stuff on the key ring, four keys as well, which is quite nice. And, uh, you know, it's got this little yellow tag on it. It's, it's all, you know, very pleasant. But I was reading through this stuff and it's, that, it's like, you know, get your keys cut and then read this first. And then it was like, ah, the Kinetica push to turn lock protects against the most common forms of burglary. Also offers a uh, Kinetica child safe feature to stop your children easily opening the lock and door. Um, so yeah, it's, it's got some features here which I will show you at the end, which um, I've taken out the middle bit, by the way. There's all sorts of split cam elements, which I've just taken out in the middle. It doesn't affect the picking, but it does make gutting a whole lot easier and springs aren't flying everywhere. Um, but yeah, this is really cool because this won't turn until you push it in and then it turns. And that mechanism is actually, um, it, I didn't know what I was expecting. And when you see it, you'd be like, oh yeah, of course. Um, so I will, I will gut this and, and show you. It is interesting, but it doesn't turn. Push it in, and then it does turn. Then listen, it does stop again. Normally, these sorts of things are done with a, a ball bearing mechanism. This is done slightly different. Um, and yeah, it's kind of cool. But anyway, it's all locked up. I have removed the circlip from here, though, so I must, must, must pay attention. Otherwise, I'll pull the whole core out and I'll cry. Right, let's get a vise and uh, see if we can pick this. So we're in the vice, and one of the things that makes this lock particularly hard, uh, especially the one I picked last time um, at the lock sport meet, is the bitting. This isn't too bad, but it's still hard with that low two and the very high pin six. It means that you, ha you have to really reach to at the back of the lock to get it open. So I've got a tension tool, I'm just going to pop that in. I'm going to start out with just a, a, a shallow hook and just sort of go along the pins. That's pin four, it'll click, pin three, it'll click. Anything on one, nothing on two. Okay, no, so again, just gonna go through. That was five this time. A tiny click again on four, nothing on three, nothing on two. Okay. I'm worried that I overset something, but then I got a click on three there and one now is binding. Oh, into a bit of a false set. I don't want to hang up on, but since I can't feel anything with a short hook, maybe a medium hook would work. So we're going to go in and just see what we can find with a medium hook at the back, uh, pin six. We'll click there. And it seems to have gone into a bit of a false set again. Uh, so we just need to go along and that's, oh, pin five. And we have got an open look at that. Hmm. So. What I've found is this is very inconsistent. This very lock has taken me 10 minutes to pick and then a couple of minutes to pick. It's it's very hard and I'm really curious as to what pins are in here. And I really want to show you what's happening at the back of this lock as well. Um, yeah, uh, so do we, I've got the key, don't I? So I, don't, I can lock it back up. So um, we'll just do that and lock this whole thing back up. There we go. And then we'll get the rest of this lock. So, um, how best to do this, how best to do this? Well, let's, let's take this bit apart first, which is to take the back off. If I get my, I need a hook of some kind, and just move this circlip around. one of those flexi circlip things very annoying there we go get that off so this back bit is a real pain but it does come out okay if you push in turn it and then you've got to uh, just gently withdraw it like this like that there we go then we should be able to remove this center part hopefully um, 
but I'll do that by putting the key in over here and just moving that out a tiny bit. This is where all the pins drop out and everything goes wrong, but um, should be okay. There we go. Right, put that back straight away. Now, if you look down here, you can see that the, there are pin chambers, but they are also uh, full of pins. It's You, you won't see. Watch. I, this is, I, I actually messed up removing the back of this to get um, all these center cam elements out uh, and broke some springs, which I've replaced. But this is why it surprised me. I didn't realize that the locking mechanism or the centering mechanism of this is actually pins. And inside here, uh, behind here, are driver pins. So the back of this lock, which I think I can just pull out, if I just, uh, um, it's locked in by this one pin, which is flat and um, it only allows about a two millimeter degree of movement. And I'll show you what happens if I tip that out. There you go. Now this whole thing can come out. Can you see that the first groove there is long and allows this to slide out a bit. There's a spring on here as well. And what's interesting is that this uh, thumb turn actually acts like a, a key. So you've got key pins, if you like, there, which correspond to cuts in the thumb turn. That's why I wanted to show you that. I, I'd never seen anything quite like that before, or if I have, I just can't remember. Anyway, I digress. Let's um, let's gut this part of the lock now. So to before I can do that, I need to just gently remove the pins from this side. There's one pinning tweezers. I wonder where they were. And you'll see that there are <laughs> weirdly pins on the thumb turn side. So you've got another long brass one. Um, then, oh, then three um, silver ones, which are actually key pins themselves. Don't know whether you can tell the rounded ends. Um, so that just makes it easier for it to work. So that's that side done. So that's good. Right, now we can try to gut the other side. I'll leave those springs in if I can. Anything I'm gonna do to just speed this bit up. There we go, get the key. Ooh. Give it a turn like that. And make sure that there, there we go, that should work. It gets a bit sticky on some bits. I don't know why. I think it's as it goes past the um, s sort of the bit which snap bar there, it's um, just a little bit funny about getting past it. Oh no, I've done a stupid thing. <sighs> Look at this. Okay, this is, see it's very late um, <laughs> at the moment. It's very tiring and I'm dropping pins everywhere. Um, oh, what a disaster. Do you know what, I, I swear this lock's cursed. So this pin here is the driver pin, pin six. This here is the key pin, pin one. <laughs> This is the uh, driver pin of pin five. And then there's all sorts of springs which I'm going to poke back down. There we go, get back in. And hopefully I won't make a big hash of this again. Oh, that's pin, he says. Well, at least it's gonna be entertaining this, this gutting because clearly um, I'm acting like it's the first lock I've ever gutted. Get in there, turn around. Don't mess up any more, lock noob. And then we're going to take these springs out. One of them's now a bit wonky, which is, ah, uh, oh, no, they're the ones on the other side. Oh man, I'm just like, this is not a good day for a uh, for lock picking, is it? Right, here we go. Let's see if we can get past that weird bit in the lock. I don't 
don't know why it's not wanting to follow down this lock. Genuinely, it's been really strange. I don't know. I've just trapped a spring there as well. It's all gone extremely awful. Um, okay, so that is in pin two. That is in pin one. Then I can take the rest of the key pins out like this. There we go. Right, then I'm probably going to have to find some spare springs now because that one definitely looks like it's um, having a hard day. Yep, look, look, look what I did to that spring. So that's a, a one broken spring, two broken springs. I swear I have actually gutted locks before, um, even though it really doesn't look like it. And I think because we're so efficient, we've now got everything out of the lock. That must be the worst gutting I've done for absolutely ages. Nevertheless, these keep these driver pins look very cool. So what we've we got here, ignore the awful gutting, but look what we have. So we've got it's like a T pin, a spool, a T pin, a T pin, standard and um, another T-pin type thing. So that's interesting because they will act a bit like spools to a degree. And, ah, it is, well look, it's actually got a small lip on this one. It's like a barb, can you see that? That's really interesting. So that should um, hang up on the core which probably means like that, which it does actually, hangs on quite tight. If it had some undercutting, that would be even better. Um, yeah, that's really interesting, that one. Uh, let's have a look at some of the other ones then. This is very much just like a standard T-pin, but you don't see many locks with T-pins in. This one is like a tapered T-pin? That's very odd shaped. Uh, and this one is the same. And then that spool is a very nice thin spool. And all the pins are steel, which is really cool. So the springs. Um, so I like that. Yeah, yeah. It's actually surprisingly, like I said, tricky and inconsistent to pick. And if you get one of these with an extreme bitting, really difficult. Anyway, um, sorry about the terrible gutting of this lock. Um, it, it was an absolute disaster. But nevertheless, really cool pins. Fun lock, a bit trickier than you might expect, and I hope you enjoy the video, and I'll see you all next time.